Are you ready for another high yield question? Let's dive right in. A 43 year old male with a recent history of norovirus is brought to the emergency department complaining of sudden onset abdominal pain. The patient has been vomiting, having diarrhea, and febrile for the past 48 hours. On exam, you note diffuse tenderness over the upper abdomen, hoarseness, and mild respiratory distress. Imaging is completed and reveals the finding shown below. Which of the following pathophysiologies best describes this presentation? A. Web formation below the cricopharyngeus. B. Immunogenic infiltration of eosinophils. C. Longitudinal superficial laceration of distal anatomy. D. Transmural rupture at left posterior lateral distal anatomy or E, dilated submucosal veins connecting portal and systemic circulation. Pause the video if you want some time to think about this question. The correct answer to this question is choice D, transmural rupture at left posterior lateral distal anatomy. What we're seeing here is Borhov syndrome, and I've highlighted in red what you should have pulled out of the question stem. If we look at the question stem, some of the clues that this was Borhoff syndrome include a history of norovirus, which is to say that the patient has been retching recently because presumably they've been throwing up and retching, tenderness over the upper abdomen, hoarseness, and mild respiratory distress. And what seals this diagnosis as being Borhoff syndrome is the image that was shown to you, which depicts pneumomediastinum, which is to say I gave you air in the mediastinum. Now the key thing to know about Borhoff syndrome is that the rupture in the anatomy, which is in the esophagus, is transmural, so it's full thickness. And we can differentiate that against answer choice C, which is a superficial laceration that tends to be longitudinal, which is Mallory-Weiss syndrome. So lots of students get confused between Mallory-Weiss syndrome and Borhoff syndrome. The truth is, is that the presentations can look very similar, but Borhoff syndrome is transmural rupture and Mallory-Weiss syndrome is superficial laceration. The other kind of nuance to this is that even in Mallory-Weiss syndrome, you can have little flecks of air in the mediastinum, but when you see full severe pneumomediastinum that pushes you in the direction of Borhoff syndrome and seals the diagnosis. Now let's, let's say that you were taking this question and you weren't exactly sure what the correct answer choice was. Could you have potentially eliminated incorrect answer choices based on some knowledge that you do have? So choice A, web formation below the cricopharyngeus, that refers to plumber vinson syndrome. Now refer to Recall that plumber vinson syndrome is that clinical triad of glossitis, the esophageal webs, and iron deficiency anemia. So if the question writer wanted you to go and pick plumber vinson syndrome, they probably would have given you some feature of the web, perhaps on imaging. They might have given you labs depicting iron deficiency anemia, or they may have described or related something having to do with atrophic glossitis. Now with plumber vinson syndrome, the other thing that, and this is a little bit more advanced, but the other thing to know about plumber vinson syndrome is that it's actually more common in postmenopausal women. And I gave you a 43 year old male in the question stem. So that's not something that you necessarily need to know for USMLE or Comlex, but if you're really diving deep into these questions and trying to pull out little bits of information to argue for one answer choice or another, if you knew that web formation meant, oh, plumber vinson syndrome, you could have said, well, and, and one you know, cherry on the top here is that the question is asking me about a 43-year-old male. Patients with plumber vinson syndrome will typically present with dysphagia, uh, choking on food, coughing, general fatigue or malaise, changes in their nails, and dizziness. And then on exam, you again would see the glossitis, the chelitis. They might look like they have pallor. Um, coilonychia, and you're going to get that lab printout showing iron deficiency anemia. But in this question, none of that's here, right? So you can safely eliminate choice A if you knew that Webb equals plumber vinson syndrome. Choice B, immunogenic infiltration of eosinophils, that is referring to eosinophilic esophagitis. 
Eosinophilic esophagitis essentially refers to when you get those uh, high levels of IgE and eosinophils will infiltrate the esophageal mucosa. Now, if they were going to give you imaging or some type of study, they probably would have shown you um, one of two things. You could see longitudinal mucosal furrows in the esophagus. You can also see the esophageal rings. So those are the two big ones, but you would, if they were going to describe it to you, they also could say that the lumen is narrowed, that the mucosal is fragile, or that the mucosa is corrugated. So those are some buzzwords to look for if they give you imaging. Typically, clinically, this will look like dysphagia, uh, chest pain retrosternally, nausea, vomiting, weight loss, and perhaps other types of just generalized symptoms. This is associated with asthma, so that IgE eosinophil link with asthma, seasonal allergies, and atopic dermatitis, or atopic dermatitis, excuse me. This will be in men, typically in their uh, mid-20s. So again, the age and the sex, not as important, but just understand that that's one extra bit of information that the question writer will always give you. The, the roughly correct age and the roughly correct biological sex based on epidemiology. Again, we don't see any of this here, right? None of that information, none of those clinical findings are in the question stem. So if you know that immunogenic infiltration of eosinophils refers to eosinophilic esophagitis, we could safely eliminate that if you knew a little bit about eosinophilic esophagitis. Now, choice C, we kind of talked about this briefly, longitudinal superficial, superficial laceration of distal anatomy. That's Mallory-Weiss syndrome. Now, again, Mallory-Weiss syndrome, very similar to Borhoff syndrome. The major difference being, one, that the laceration is longitudinal and superficial, so it doesn't cut through the entire esophagus. And typically, not always, but typically on a test, the patient is going to present with hematemesis and probably have a history of either alcoholism or bulimia. For whatever reason on tests, the patient with Mallory-Weiss syndrome has alcoholism or bulimia. And because of that, they vomit a lot, they have bloody vomit often, and that causes the longitudinal superficial laceration. If you see hematemesis, you can't say, oh, it's Mallory-Weiss syndrome because that still could be Borhoff, but that should start to make you think, okay, maybe the patient therefore has a history of alcoholism. Maybe they want me to pick Mallory-Weiss syndrome and then look for additional cues, clues. Now, again, patients with Mallory-Weiss syndrome could potentially have small little flecks of air in the mediastinum, but in this image, you're seeing full-blown severe pneumomediastinum, and that has to push you in the direction of Borhoff syndrome being the best answer choice. And then lastly, choice E, dilated submucosal veins that connect the portal and systemic circulation. So this, this refers to esophageal varices. Esophageal varices occur secondary to portal hypertension. So you're going to be looking for all of the associated conditions that have to do with portal hypertension. So cirrhosis, hepatic encephalopathy, biliary cirrhosis, ascites, peritonitis, Bud Chiari syndrome, etc. You're going to look for clinical features that are also associated with portal hypertension. So hematemesis, coffee ground emesis, hematochesia, melena. Physically, patients are going to show the clinical stigmata of liver disease. So you're going to look for telangiectasia, palmar erythema, caput medusae, spider angiomata, gynecomastia, hepatosplenomegaly, right? These are all things that we expect to see if someone has liver disease, okay? So physically on exam, they're going to point some of that stuff out. The history will be suggestive of portal hypertension or liver disease, and they have to give that to you. Otherwise, you have no reason to believe that the, the question here is alluding to an esophageal varicy. Uh, again, we don't see any of that here, so we could probably safely eliminate answer choice D. So when you're taking this question, the imaging seals the diagnosis, but even if you completely ignore the imaging, you can work backwards and eliminate incorrect answer choices.